Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this week's PMI Friday webinar, What Makes a Good Black Belt Project, with Dem Dennis Cromantine Marsh. Uh, my name is Susanna Clark, and I'm going to be facilitating the session today, and that includes running the Q&A desk. So we're going to be using that throughout the presentation today. The Q&A and the chat buttons can be found on your Zoom control panel. So please do keep your questions coming, any comments, any observations, and I will share them with Dennis. Today's webinar is being recorded and we're going to send you um, a link via email early next week to the full recording of both the audio and the presentation that you'll see today. As usual, we are also broadcasting live on Facebook and LinkedIn. So to those of you who are joining us on those streams, we welcome you. To be able to participate in future in any polls that we run um, to receive the recording by email and also if you want to make future suggestions for future topics we might cover then please do register for the webinars at pmi.co.uk forward slash webinars um, we'll send all registered participants a short voice the customer survey at the end of the session today and as always we're really grateful for your feedback um, also, any suggestions you have for future topics, um, I always check these out and I'm really interested to hear what you have to say. And that's really how we design our schedule around you. So please do let us know what you'd like us to cover. Thank you everyone for your continued support. And now I'd like to hand over to Dennis. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Susanna. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. How lovely to see so many of you on this uh, beautiful Friday afternoon here. Uh, on this webinar and uh, we'll have a lot of fun together for the next uh, hour or so. So, um, really interesting question. Susanna you know, said to me, you know, what makes a good black belt project? And I thought, actually, I'm not, I'm not sure. I have to think about that. So, um, hopefully today I'm going to share some insights with you from having, you know, done black belt project myself coached black belt projects or, you know, um, assessed black belt projects for the last 20 years and um, you know we're going to look at you know what is a black belt project huh? how is it different from a green belt and then looking through the lens of SOPK at four dimensions and um, I'm going to limit it to five top tips for a good black belt project by the end. So first of all um, you know what is a good black belt project and um, before I start with um, telling you what my view is, you know, as you probably you know, are used to it from us, uh, with a little poll. And the poll is as follows, you know, at the moment in your own organization, how are you getting on with black belt projects? And there's four answers, choose one of them. So answer one, we really struggle to deliver effective black belt projects. Answer two, we haven't done any black belt projects yet. Number three, we've done a few, on number four, you are absolutely amazing and you are reaping lots of the rewards. So that polling is launched now, um, so please do cast your vote and um, looking forward to seeing what our audience says for this. <laughs> I'm okay. sure you've seen a variety of different standards across the years. 20 years, Dennis, that's quite some time. Yeah. Yes, um, you know, black belt projects come in all shapes and sizes, the good, the bad and the ugly. Um, the ones that are amazing, they do stand out and I do remember them for a very long time, including the organizations and the people who were running those black belt projects. So, uh, yes. So, yes. Super. Well, I think that's it. So I'm going to, if you've got a vote to cast, please cast it now and then I will close the polling and share it with everybody. So we have in the lead, we have done a few. Mm -hmm. And of course, we always have one who is amazing and is reaping the rewards. I know who's on the webinar today. I think I know who might have put that in. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so we really struggle to deliver effective projects. Uh, one third, we haven't started any projects, about one fifth. We've done a few, most are about half a few, and I say one, one uh, five you know one one person said yeah we are amazing so uh, so yeah 
It's always good to hear that. <laughs> Thanks. I'll start sharing those results. And if you want to come back to me anytime, Dennis, just let me know. Thank you. So, yeah, so the people who have done a few or we really struggle, feel free to stick in the chat window some of your challenges. And Susanna will then read your challenges. Because, of course, what I'm interested in, what is actually getting in the way of you doing an effective an effective uh, black belt project that gives you the results. And for the person who said we are amazing, please type in the chat window, you know, what is it about your black belt projects that you're doing in your organization that makes them truly successful? So please, you know, uh, st stick some, some, um, some things in the chat for that. So what is a black belt project? Now, first of all, some misconceptions I want to to, to, to highlight. And sometimes, you know, a black belt project can be seen as just, you know, it's a, um, a green belt project with go faster stripes, yeah? Bit more snazzy, bit bigger, a bit more complex, some more cool statistics using Minitab, uh, maybe a bit longer um, or a bit more complex. And yes, a black belt project can have those attributes, but I want to go beyond that. There are more things that actually make it a good black belt project. By the way, lovely Suzuki Ignis with goes faster stripes on the right hand side. Um, but first of all, top tip if you haven't seen Sean's webinar from a few weeks ago, do go and watch it. Uh, in there, Sean talks about what makes a good green belt project. And whenever I look at a black belt project, what always stands out for me is that sometimes people are, um, they have challenges with the basics of, of the green belt project content. So the green belt training. And they're more comfortable with the black belt stuff, but actually they don't get the green belt basics just quite right. So these nine top tips that came here out of the green belt, they are still hold true for black belt as well. And you can't go far wrong with doing a very good green belt project. But there will be scenarios within your organization where say, well, actually we want to go beyond a good green belt project. So what I want to show on this slide here is the differences between a green belt and a black belt. So why do you want to get a black belt involved? Before I do this, uh, Suze, any questions? Well, it's an observation. Yeah. So to your request for, you know, what have you found? Mm -hmm. uh, Lawrence shared with, with us that they struggle to deliver due to the business wanting to move more, more quickly with the change. And I thought that was uh, not unusual, but you would be interested to hear that. I'd appreciate yeah. your perspective on that. Thank you. I'm just, so I'm going to write it down. I've got some lovely star shape posters you know <laughs> physical things to write on huh? so we want to do it quickly uh, bear with me on that one then so how is a black belt project different from a green belt project number one if you look at the left top corner it's just like in a uh, green belt project you make an improvement and has to deliver quantifiable benefit number two there's no known solution today because of course if there is a known solution just go and do it but now it starts to become more interesting from number three to number nine. In a black belt project, very often a more thorough deep dive is required to go to the root causes of the problem. And that comes from the point number four. The complexity often spans more functions or it's a function of systemic interactions or you have a change management challenge. And you know, the really scary ones may have all three of these challenges. The other thing to look at is in terms of process have been identified where you now require to do a system diagnosis first, yeah? The sponsors come to you and say, right, I've got this thing, go and fix it for me, make A go faster. And therefore you may say, okay, if this is what you want as the end goal, where do we need to focus first? So you need some kind of diagnosis is required first. On the sixth point here, in terms of repeatable processes, what you often find in black belt projects is once you've stabilized the processes and standardized, you've got rid of your assignable causes, it's now the focus on reducing common cause variation. 
And that, of course, means the processes need to be standardized. So top tip here, if your process is not standardized, go and standardize it. If it's got signals, see if you can eliminate the signals. And then we have that whole mist, soup, or whatever shape you want to give it of complexity of common cause variation, then you're going to do the deeper diagnostic using black belt uh, processes. The effect can be defined. So here we need to now look not only at the single effect, but also the interactions. As you often know, it's the interactions that often give you an undesirable outcome. CAPEX may also be a case in a black belt project where on a green belt project very often, I would go as far as to say that, you know, 90% of green belt projects require no CAPEX. There's a handful I've seen with CAPEX, but most of the time it's about the just a time investment by people, not actually a, uh, a capital expenditure. But black belt projects can have that in it. I've just reviewed one from a gentleman who's working in the African subcontinent, and there was a significant amount of capex required, but the business case was there because he had got the data to back it up. And then a the ninth point, and this is an interesting one coming back to your point, Susanna. Um, Career project, three months. Black belt project, not unusual to take six to 12 months to complete. Um, to come back to your point and about quickly, um, I think some, well, from my perspective, the organizations need sometimes to be educated in what it means to deliver a result. Having a well defined scope is a result. Yeah, having some data for baseline is a result. Having gotten rid of signals of cyber causes is a result. So what I would suggest to you, if you have your complex black belt project, make sure you have these gates where you communicate with your stakeholders is that you're moving forward, that you're gaining deeper insight and that just the act of being on that journey is delivering results. It's not just about the final number at the end, no matter how important that is, of course, for the organization, but it's actually the learning that happens along that journey. So um, communication, definitely one way of doing it. If you find that you have a very complex project, the other thing, of course, to do is to apply the pizza methodology, yeah? one slice at a time, you eat one slice at a time, and then split up your project into bite-sized chunks. Um, the last project I've been doing for the last six months, uh, we also use an agile methodology within that. Every week we were delivering something on that journey. But in the background, you know, still doing lots of black belt level uh, interactions with the organization. So if you have a black belt, it just means that with confidence, you can take on bigger, more complex challenges. And just a final point, and this is an interesting one, impatience by senior stakeholders to get things done today or yesterday, if it was simple, it would have been done. The fact they need you to do it often means that it's not as easy to fix. It does take time. Um, so back to managing your stakeholders on that. And I hope that gives you an answer, but do let me know in the chat if you've got some more questions around this. So here's a scenario. Here, first of all, green belt scenario, yeah? So you've, you've uh, defined the process in your project, you have standardized it, metrics are in place, you respond appropriately, you have also now um, some signals with sample causes and you consistently remove them. That is a fantastic green belt project and I've seen major, major successes just huh, by doing those three things. Now the black belt project goes beyond that and the black belt project actually says that where the process is not capable of meeting customer requirements due to complex and excessive variation in your process, common cost variation, you now need to have that black belt scope in there to do that deep dive again. And not just to deal with the data side, but also with more complex change management issues in the organization, and especially the management of your stakeholders. Now, the other challenge you're gonna find on a black belt project, and therefore what makes a good black belt project is to play this little game called Where's Wally? Now, here's a very simple formula, and for the maths 
mathematicians amongst us, y is a function of x. What that means is there's lots of variables in the organization and all of them have an impact on the outcome. Now the challenge for a good black belt project is to find those axes, huh? those predictors of the result that actually give you the biggest bang for your buck. And of course you notice that the variable number 42 is in bold. Uh, being the meaning to life, the universe, and everything. But not just that. It's not just about finding these single factors. A really good black belt project also understands the interaction in between. For example, you know, I love coffee. I just made myself a lovely coffee in my thermos here. I add sugar in it. Coffee does not taste sweet. Or I have coffee. I add a spoon in it. It still doesn't taste sweet. But the moment I add sugar in it and I stir my spoon, then I get sweet coffee. Now, some of you may go, yuck, I don't like sweet coffee. Yeah, but as an interaction, of course, that's how we often achieve a result in real life. It's the interaction between the various components. So a good black belt project not only finds the vital axis, but also how they influence each other. So then the question, of course, is if that's what you want to be able to do, how, what does it mean for your black belts? So when we develop black belts, we cover the follow, following areas. Systems thinking, seven management planning tools, advanced statistics, testing theories, and change management and influencing. And then I, you know, I, was, I was talking to my, my colleague this week, so what's that split at the moment uh, on that? And this is what the split looks like. And I do apologize to those who know I have a you know, I don't like pie charts that much, but I just thought, you know, for, for the sake of it, let's get a pie chart, a pie chart in here. Is that actually, you know, half of our black belt course is about advanced statistics. So we don't deny they are important, but they are only half. The other half is actually taken care of with testing theories, creative thinking, systems thinking, some management planning tools, change management and influencing. And there's a key insight even though I love data, I love numbers, but the true change that I'm able to make as a good black belt with a good project is actually by having this complete arsenal of skills. And the bits on the left-hand side are important to use the bits on the right. Suze? Well, all I was going to say, Dennis, is I often talk to um, our black belt delegates, both whilst they're in training, but also after training. And it's the, all the stuff on the left hand side of your pie chart that they're always surprised by. If I ask them, you know, what did you expect or what was, you know, what's, what were you not expecting? And they say, I just wasn't expecting to do so much around that. The, the soft skills, if you like. Yeah. Um, and then when you speak to them six months later, they say, thank goodness I did, because actually a huge amount of my work has been about influencing and coaching and understanding and getting everyone joined up and so on. So, yes. yeah, absolutely. It's, it's essential. So thank you, Suze. So I'll come back to that particular point. So in terms of gaining deeper insights, there's some research was done by Thomas Litzak. And he came up with, okay, what makes a good black belt? Yeah, what makes a good black belt project? And if you look at this bar chart or Pareto chart in this case, again, perfectly wrong and beautiful 3D. But on the left-hand side, overcoming obstacles, it's your personal attitude. It's about thinking through the process, stepping back from the problem. It's about effective communication. And then to the right-hand side, there's a few, Strikers there, data, math skills, team experience. And I find it always fascinating if you think about what makes a good black belt project is to be good at fixing a problem. And you being able to find the right tool to do that, but it comes from thinking, from communicating, and then supported by data. Now, just in case you're wondering what this thing on the screen is, it's a red onion. Yeah, it's a sliced onion. And what I always say is a good black belt is, is like an onion where you peel away one layer and you find a new layer of truth. You peel away another layer and you find some new insights, some new data, some new challenges. So a good black belt project is where you can go deep to the core of your problem. 
And therefore, a good black belt, of course, isn't necessarily an expert in the answer, but they are an expert in asking the questions and engaging people. And then the other people, the experts, can go and find the answer. So don't set yourself up for failure by believing that you need to know all the answers. That's what your, where your team comes in. Now, when you think about the attributes of a group black belt project, um, you may remember this model. I had a system of profound knowledge created by William Atlas Deming. And I'm going to talk through the four different lenses of this model now in terms of what makes a good black belt project. So systems thinking, variation, theory of knowledge, and developing intrinsic motivation through psychology. So first of all, systems thinking. It's very important in your black belt project to understand the system within which you operate. And number one on that list is make sure that your problem is linked to a strategic goal. There's nothing as off-putting as a stakeholder or sponsor gives you a problem and actually there's no energy in the business or by the team to do anything about it. And you need that buy-in. And on that point, if you do not get that buy-in from the beginning on your black belt project, yeah, work on that from the beginning. Don't just get going on your project, work on that. That this is truly important to business. You need to create time and space for you and your team to work on it. And I would love to see some feedback on that from people. How much time and space are you given to work on your black belt project? So then a systemic diagnosis of how the work works. So for example, through system mapping, you know, having a multidisciplinary team, cross-functional complexities, and then the interaction, which may of course be a tier one supply chain improvement project or tier two even, or you go and work within your customer and you do a project there. I've seen many successful projects that go beyond the the, the system of your organization, but actually the extended enterprise. Now, two tools, of course, there, understanding the system, system mapping and the interrelationship diagraph to understand how things work together. That one, by the way, I'm going to talk more about that next week in a webinar about um, uh, tools that give you a kick, but there's something magical about that ID that I'll talk more about next week. And um, I was trying to find a photo from, if you know, a film called Minority Report with Tom Cruise, and he moves all these things on the screen. I thought I want a photo, but I couldn't find a copyright, you know, licensed photo of that. But I did find this photo. And actually, there's been a company that's taken this Minority Report thinking, and they've made these big dashboards, in this case, physical. Of course, now in COVID, you don't see anybody sitting around it. Huh? So now they've the physical boards have become virtual, but it's about seeing that bigger picture. And the key skill for a good black belt project, therefore, is knowing to navigate through what do you drag onto your board and what do you throw away? To say this is not important, this is not part of the key scope. It may be of interest, but it's not key. So I'm just going to move it to one side. Variation. Understand the variation and its interactions. So variation is key. And the funny thing is, still to this date, lots of organizations don't understand the concept of variation. So a good black belt project is where you can talk and engage your key stakeholders and the team about the concept of variation and what the variation is trying to tell you. Now, the other tool that we do talk about on a black belt project is hypothesis testing. Now, hypothesis testing is when you have very, very small differences and you still want to test whether there's a difference, yes or no. And just on that note, a top tip, if you have one facility or one team that manages 89% on-time delivery and one team that manages 5% on-time delivery, you do not need a hypothesis test to prove that there's a difference, yeah? The difference is obvious. But when it's 94% and 96%, and you still need to determine if there is statistically speaking a difference in the performance, in the processes, that's when you use hypothesis testing for those small differences. It took me years to realize that. I just thought it was cool stuff, huh? two sample t-tests, non-biometric tests, etc. cetera. Um, the third point, 
Um, again, just at the moment, we have a fantastic black belt project running with a, a client, which started off as, you know, let's just value stream a process because I want to get more out of this in terms of the number of things that we do. They did the diagnosis of the big picture, systemic thinking. And when it came down to the, where do we find the root cause or the core, the main sort of problems, it was about understanding measurement as a source of variation. This has become now a completely rescaled project around measurement variation. The other thing a good black belt project should be good at is to make sure that you can test the changes on improvement using different control charts. And that means you need to understand the question you're asking and therefore which control chart gives me the best answer on the question. And by the way, you can't go wrong with IMR control charts, yeah? But just make sure learning phase, operating phase, monitoring phase, staging, the four questions. And if you don't know what those are, go back to the green belt documentation, online yellow belt, they are in there, yeah? And if you're still not sure, give me a call. Let's talk it through. But it's amazing how many black belt projects I see where they can't get that basic control chart right. So just to get a few graphs and you may, you may see the pictures uh, and recognize them. Suze? I was going to say, actually, it was when you talked about hypothesis testing, it reminded me I was uh, with a client last week and we were talking about uh, they had a problem um, on, on a production line and the line had stopped. But, they, you know, they're well organized. They have processes that they follow for analyzing what's caused the, the stop. But after a few days, they still hadn't managed to restart the line successfully and they still hadn't managed to find out the root cause. And uh, they went to their black belt mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't a project, but he came down and they um, decided to try hypothesis testing to try and find those small things that were happening that were making a difference and had a really successful outcome from it. So it was great to hear that example that, that was using the black belt tools in the moment to solve the everyday problems, which was great, really interesting. Lovely, lovely. Thanks for sharing that uh, that story, Suze. So yes, so it's not just about the theory and the excitement theory, but actually the practical application, of course. So uh, thanks for sharing that. Um, so on this note, yeah, if you think about a Greenbelt project, it may well be that the first thing you do is stabilize the process. You create data, you get rid of assignable causes. And very slowly and gradually, as you can see on this chart here, which is not a control chart, it's just a run chart with an average line, yeah? But what you see here is that variation starting to reduce. And a good black belt project, a good black belt leader with that team is a continuous quest to reduce common cause variation. Now, what I have done with this data, and especially this last bit of the tail here, I did stick it in the control chart and then I did a capability analysis. And in this capability analysis at the moment, if you're familiar with this, a CPK of more than one, that means the process is capable. It's within the customer specifications, but there's not much wiggle room. You have this process, if it gets you know, a few signals, the variation increases or it starts to shift a bit more to the right, you will have uh, failures. So the quest of a good black belt and a good black belt project is to keep finding every day those signals or of you no know, signals, those elements of common cause variation, and then deal with them one by one. So on target with minimum variation, that becomes the ambition of a good black belt project. Um, a few years ago, I had a fantastic black belt project where the CPK was more than three. And what that meant was that within these huge limits where the process was only that wide, and the limits were this wide, is what they could, could do is an optimization of the components within their process to make it faster and cheaper to produce while still being in specification, while still having enough wiggle room. So having a very high CPK value actually enables you to optimize even further your resources, your inputs, and therefore the outputs, and still be consistent at delivering the outputs. Amazing success, that project. Theory of knowledge. So the models that we use 
to make sense of reality. A good black belt project often has models within it. They could be as simple as I had a prediction, a theory, I went to test it and that was useful. That could be a simple model. It could also be about generating hypotheses to test using relationships or regression analysis. It could be about design of experiments. By the way, do not do design of experiments, which is not the panacea to all ills, if until you've done regression analysis yeah, on the single parameters. So find a vital few and only then create that model. But as around data, there are also some elements around change models. How do I now enable the organization to go with me on this journey of change? And finally, a model for planning the project. So think about the seven planning and management tools. Absolutely essential if you've been given a problem, but you're not quite sure how to execute the project. So you can think about these three dimensions here. Now, I could not uh, ignore the current world situation. I found these lovely models here about the, uh, in this case, it's about the Oxford uh, vaccine, um, where I'm playing, uh, I'm playing a, a very, very small part in this particular uh, topic at the moment. Um, but here we have some models. They're trying to make sense of reality using models and using evidence and then making predictions around this. Now, the last dimension of the system profound knowledge, psychology. It's not the least, one would argue, is actually the most important. And the, the key thing, the key skill of a good black belt project is to get the most out of your people. I've just realized I put a lovely spelling mistake on there. Getting the most out of your, your people, yeah? Ignore one of those yours there, yeah? Um, so understand how people can be different. And there was one project recently where the team didn't want the black belt to come in. Yeah, the stake all said, come and help them. The team says, who are you? Go away, we are too busy. And it took that person during the COVID pandemic a number of months to engage with the team, to start to do some basics with them and to help to understand where they were emotionally and where they were in terms of the execution of the process. And after a few months of quick wins, the team started to trust the black belt. They realized there was a benefit having the black belt there. And the project became an amazing success. But it didn't start off like that. And personally, I've had also many situations like that where the team says, who are you? What are you doing here? Go away, I'm too busy. So that comes back to the, the good black belt project is where you continue to figure out a way to engage with people. Communication, therefore, is key. And that does mean communicating using the language that the organization speaks. Now, 20 years ago, when I did my black belt, uh, was four weeks, the black belt that I did, uh, it included the green belt all in one go. And I still remember that after three and a half weeks, the, the trainer at the time said to me, you know, by the way, you may encounter these things called people, but don't worry about it. You just throw some p-values and chi-squared numbers at them, they will understand. So after four weeks of brainwashing, that's what we did. Guess what? We got nowhere. For two years, we were fighting with the organization because the language that we spoke as black belts was different from the language that the business understood. So we changed it. I was working at the time in a project management-based organization in the power generation industry, and we changed our language to be the language of the business that they used every day as part of the projects that they were delivering. We still did all the exciting stuff behind the scenes, but when we were communicating, there was not a single p-value in sight. It was just normal written language in normal meetings. So practice that, practice telling the story with all the exciting advanced statistics that you know, or with the complexities that you understand, but then turn it into normal, common garden, everyday language. So trust therefore becomes key. And that means a good black belt project, you've gained the trust of the organization. The final thing on that is, is that managing personal change, especially if you work with people who've been there a long time, they've got lots of experience and all of a sudden 
a black belt comes down and says, right, this is wrong, this is different, and I've got the data to prove it. So think about that emotion that they are going through when something they held as a long-held belief is actually disproven. It was a lovely project by a gentleman called Phil, and Phil found instead of there being a positive correlation between two variables, he found a negative correlation, and it made no sense to any of us understanding the system within which we were operating. But we didn't give up. The team said we got the data wrong. Yeah, the manager said the experiments went wrong, but we didn't give up. We kept understanding, say, there is truth in here. We just don't understand the truth. And we kept digging and digging and digging until we found in one of the elements of the subsystem, we found a fundamental flaw that nobody had ever analyzed, let alone solved. And because we didn't give up, we turned actually the negative correlation into a positive correlation after we fixed the subsystem. Big success, but it took six months of not giving up and tenacity. And that also means that the primary intervention cycle, that gaining entry with your stakeholders, with your team is key, and also challenge not only your own limiting beliefs, but also the beliefs of the organization. And of course, having evidence backed up by data statistics can be useful in that. So but when I saw this photo, I just loved it. I actually love this photo here, yeah? Get the best out of your team and get the best out of your stakeholders, yeah? Whether it's virtual, I've just finished a six month virtual project. And yes, we did look like that happy by the end of the six months, yeah? We made a success, we made a transformation. We helped the business move along. So those were the four dimensions of, um, of a system profound knowledge in terms of what makes a good black belt project. So what I now want to share is the five top tips. So tip number one, think about your scope. Meaningful, manageable, measurable. Yeah, just like on the green belt. But the meaningful, make sure it's linked to a strategic goal. Manageable, create that time and space for yourself and for your team to work on the black belt project. Complexity takes time to diagnose. It takes time to dissect. It takes time to figure out what to fix. Measurable, data, 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 subjective data, objective data, the data in your ERP systems or data you create from you. Data in all its beautiful shapes and sizes is key. So just some things on the left-hand side there. Now I do want to put this picture up. Uh, at the moment, we're working in the garden and we're just uh, you're planting the seeds for the new season. I just thought I'll leave this picture with you for one second to read through. So yeah. Key, you know, top tip with tomatoes, water them. Water them a lot. You never can water tomatoes enough, in my experience anyway, at least uh, when they are in the greenhouse here uh, in, the, in the British climate when it gets warm, keep watering them. So top tip number two, be good at those basics. Do not forget about your basics. Yeah, follow the improvement cycle bit by bit and have those proper gate reviews with your sponsors. Um, the other key difference between a good green belt project and black belt project is often in a final phase of the improvement project, implement, standardize, and review. Make sure they are completed. Make sure you've actually given the business something, say, hey, here's now that deliverable. Understand your data, yeah? And within that, only use those data which are useful. Um, you know, increasingly I work now with large organizations which have gigabytes, terabytes of data. And they produce every day millions of new pieces of data. And the question always is, is this data useful to answer the exam question? And then it always starts with basic. What was the question I'm trying to answer? So a good black belt project is where you define those questions first. Like I said, be very, very good at the basic control charts and then challenge your organization where in our system is excessive variation causing problems. Now, that's a fascinating statement 
Because that means the organization must understand the concept of variation. That may mean that using black belt have to educate them. Especially if you work in an organization which has targets and just uses targets to drive performance. Or last month was higher or lower than this month. I always use no bleep, Sherlock. Huh? There will always be a difference. The question is, what's the variation trying to tell us? Suze? I'm just going to do a cheeky plug. Um, Rich Seddon is delivering a uh, webinar on the 7th of May on Big Data. Now, we're going to be publishing our schedule for May next month. Uh, so um, if you're interested in Big Data, watch out for that date, 7th of May, with our very own Rich Seddon leading it. <laughs> Thank you. My pleasure. Um, and that's quite funny. I, I had a, a, a great old discussion with the head of uh, mathematics, mathematics at the local university about big data. They were terribly excited about all the models they made. I just asked them that simple question, what are you trying to accomplish? And they couldn't answer it. So uh, we had a lovely, lovely discussion about Bayesian statistics, but they could not answer that basic question. So stick to the basics around the data as well. Number four, tell a good story. That may mean you summarize periodically in your projects, in the communication with your organization, and especially around what's been proven or disproven and when it's been a surprise. Look for out for surprises, because the surprises are the aha moment in many projects. Point two that keep the story necessary and sufficient. And then that number three, that mantra, no surprises. Whenever I work with a client, that's the first thing I always say when we do the personal contracting. I will keep you updated on the good, the bad, and the ugly. The moment there's no communication, get concerned. Something's gone wrong. There may be something uncomfortable, but always face it. Face your problem, communicate it, and share it with the organization to see how you can fix it. Uh, I still remember, very memorable, I was a senior manager who was reporting into a central uh, chief of operations and they had done something in their local country and they had not informed the person head office. And the person head office, which was a sponsor of this project, went ballistic, yeah? And unfortunately that, that person said, well, my country, my rules. And head office says, no, my company, my rules. <laughs> but what they failed to do is to have this mantra of no surprises. Even if you do something you may get resistance to, still share it. So storytelling, yeah? And storytelling is like, you know, when you talk to a four-year-old or Disney film, huh? once upon a time, that was a problem. Yeah, you fixed the problem. You've beaten the baddie. You are the hero and you live happily ever after, yeah? It's that kind of storytelling. That's how you want to get the story across to your... Uh, to your audience and that's what makes a really good black belt project and then lastly manage effective change it's not about the tools the tools it's not about the stats it's about taking your people in your organization on a journey of change that's when you truly leave that legacy behind whatever it is you did no matter how small that's when you make a really really great black belt project so think about some of the, the, the tools and the methods they see on the left-hand side. Yeah. You know, this mantra, I'm sure you recognize it yourself. People don't mind change, they mind being changed. It's all about how do you engage and enable the other person to make the change work for them. So those are my five top tips. So I'll now come to a summary. And my summary is as follows. First of all, Apply the basics very well. And if you feel you can't get the basics quite right, come and talk to us. Focus on changing and testing little and often. Came from a lovely chap called Mario back in Brazil 15 years ago. And he told this story to all the people there. He says, I want you to fail. And the people, oh, I want you to fail. Yes, I want you to fail little and often. Because if you fail little and often, that means you're changing little and often, you're testing little and often, and therefore you improve little and often. And I think that's a key skill for black belt as well. Keep improving bit by bit by bit. Use the right tool, answer the right question, and then back up with the right data. 
yeah but always start with a question tell a good story minimize geek speak share success and then a mantra of no surprises so i would love to hear from you guys if there's anything you've got a question about right now or an observation or um something you want to share feel free to uh, stick it in the chat window um but apart from that that's where my that's where my webinar uh, content is finishing um and like i say if you have any questions or any challenges with your current black belt project or how you engage in organization just just uh, you know reach out on linkedin to me and um, let's talk and we do have um an email which is a team at pmi.co.uk email so if um, you are uh, struggling, you don't know one of our email addresses, just send something in to team at pmi.co.uk and um, we will then cascade it to the right person, to Dennis, et cetera. Um, just a bit of feedback in the, in the chat, Dennis, is to say thank you for your answers and, um, and uh, also, also to say that they get asked for quick wins a lot. Yes. So that's interesting. I don't know, um, is that, I mean, you mentioned a little bit about the sort mm -hmm. of just do it at the beginning. Yeah. So quick wins. Yeah. Back to quick wins. Quick wins are, of course, as you know, a key enabler to create trust that you're on the right path. The one thing to make sure is when you do a quick win, when you test a quick win, apply PDSA and do that adopt, adapt, abandon very quickly. And then from a black belt perspective, make sure you have the evidence behind it that this change truly was an improvement. Two stories on that, quickly, if I may, if I may share them. One of them was, a again, a, a lovely um, a gentleman who had a really frustrating time with his Black Belt project. And he said, Dennis, I found 20 different ways that didn't work. Is my project a failure? And I said, it's only a failure if you do not communicate as effectively with the organization that these 20 theories do not work. Um, and that can be, of course, back to communication, your knowledge management processes within the organization. But if it comes to quick wins, and I always will ask this, whenever I see a black belt project and whenever I coach a black belt is whenever you have a quick win, document it, record it, and can you see the change in the data, whether something goes up or down? I hope that answers that question around quick wins. And there's something else, uh, another comment that uh, obviously the topic of benefits comes up mm -hmm. a lot as well. Yeah. Um, uh, but and, and the answer is yes, that's covered it perfectly with regards to quick wins. So take it away on benefits, Dennis. <laughs> Thank you. Benefits and yeah, benefits realization. Um, there is a webinar on, is that right, by MC on benefits. I think there is coming up. Yeah, or was, there's, one coming there's, one, up. there's one that's been done. <laughs> I, I, just, I'm just give me one moment and I will check for you, Dennis. <laughs> it's either coming or, or MC did it already. Yeah, benefits. So think about tangible, intangible benefits. A good black belt project, of course, answers the exam question of a measurable benefit to the organization. Um, and there's many different ways around that, but there is a separate webinar on that. Um, and we've also got, yes, we've also got um, uh, Warren, in, again in May, will be uh, delivering a, a webinar on impact as impact, well, so yeah. that's coming too. Yeah, um, it's an interesting one. Um, I've been in situations where the, um, the focus on a single KPI benefit completely destroyed the project. Um, so the one thing I would definitely ask uh, around that, especially when you have a target to meet, ask your sponsor, ask your stakeholder, what happens if we don't meet this target, if we cannot um, verify this benefit? What's the impact of that? So you understand what's driving the strategic decision to make this an, an issue. If it's about financial benefits, by the way, top tip, at the beginning of your project, go to your financial controller in your organization and say, hey, I've been asked to make this number come to, to reality. How do I verify during the project that we're meeting that? Don't leave it till the very end. 
So engage early with your financial controller if that's a key aspect of your Blackwell project. And I hope that answers the question. Thanks so, so much, Dennis. And thank you everybody for all of your questions. Uh, really grateful for them. Um, so just before we close out the session today, um, just a reminder that, uh, I mean, Dennis mentioned our uh, online Yellowbelt course. So uh, it is launched. And if you've got any members of your team who are looking for an introduction to improvement, perhaps they're going to support you in delivering your Black Belt project, then it really is a great place to start to sort of bring them up to speed with the topics that you're going to be talking about. So do have a look on our website for more information on that. We're getting some really super feedback on it. Mm. Please also look out for the Voice of the Customer Survey I mentioned at the beginning. You're going to receive it from us shortly, and we're really grateful if you could let us know your feedback about today's session and also any suggestions for future topics mm. in future webinars. So that brings us to the end of today's webinar. Yep. Um, on behalf of PMI, on behalf of Dennis, and of myself, um, I'd like to wish you all a very um, safe and happy weekend. Thank you for joining us today. And uh, hopefully see you next week uh, when we're gonna talk about black belt tools with a kick. So what, what are my favorite, favorite black belt tools to make the project a success? So uh, do join next week again and uh, we'll see each other again. Super, thank you, goodbye.